If you're making, you know, if you're planning on doing reborns as, you know, kind of like a hobby business, I would try to go for sculpts that are, that are awesome, that speak to you. But before you start spending the big bucks, go out and buy a couple of these cheapy dolls, strip them out, paint them, see if you like it. I mean, because there are a lot of times that you'll watch all the videos and you'll get all excited and you'll sit down to do the project and you'll go, oh, hell no, this is not for me. You know, and then you've wasted all that stuff and you feel bad. And reborning does not have to be a business. It can just be a hobby. It can just be something you do that's pleasurable. It sure is relaxing. Well, I think some people start selling because they want to make a little money so that they can afford to buy more sculpts and keep going. And it's a good way to, to generate a little extra income for your hobby. Um, then there are people, and I've, I've talked about this before, who just like jump in both feet and say, I want some of that money. And they never take into account that the people who are making that money are people who have skills, you know, they're talented artists who are using this medium to express themselves. Again, I, you know, it's not painting a reborn doll isn't rocket science, but painting a really good reborn doll. And I'm sorry, you guys must be seasick from this camera. I have it hanging from my dryer rack so you guys can see from up there. But every time I hang up a limb, it rocks the drying rack and I'm not even paying attention. So this video might be a seasick video. I don't know. My apologies. I will work out the tripod situation. I have such a narrow workbench here that it's hard to find a place for the tripod to be where you guys can get a good view. I'm just experimenting. If you have any ideas, put them down there in the comments. So I'm going to get this whole baby fleshed up. And then um, I think I'm going to do probably, I'm thinking I'm probably only going to need two layers of this. And then I'll switch over to maybe a little color correction. I think I'm going to end up with an interference yellow and maybe bluish brown wash so we can cut some of this orange a little bit. It's not bad. I kind of like it. I think it's really nice. It might need a little deepening. We'll see as we go. There are no hard and fast rules to this. You just, just do what you love. Make it look the way you like. Don't worry about anybody else. And then we'll do some details. And these little hands and feet are so tiny that it's gonna be crazy business to do um, nails on toes and fingers, but it'll be fun to try, right? And then we'll start some hair painting. Good morning, everyone. I took yesterday off to clean my garage out. We're almost done. I am so excited. We have like, you know, just a few more things to do. While I'm here, I'm going to show you something. This is paint thinner. And I don't know if you can see because of this angle. It's kind of bad. But you don't have to throw away the paint thinner after you clean your brushes. What will happen is the, um, I think maybe that's a better view. The solids, the paint solids, will sit at the bottom and the paint thinner will come to the top. So I don't disturb the bottom, I just clean these guys off. And um, I don't wash them after this, I just, I just try to get as much of the paint off as I can. If you leave too much paint on there, the brush will start to get ruined. And I have this fantasy that I'm going to separate my brushes by color, like all my skin tone brushes, all my red brushes, all my blue brushes, all my yellow brushes. But I've yet to be. I will when I have a little downtime, whenever that is. My God. I was thinking I was going to take most of January off and just relax, but we just got going really, really fast. Um, today's my first day back watching my diet and going to the gym. I, I say going to the gym with hesitation because I'm not a person who enjoys it. And I don't really do anything there but walk on the treadmill because it's too cold outside to walk for me right now. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm still on lifting restrictions, so I won't be doing any of that. Not that I would anyway. Um, but I'm going to go to the gym today in a few minutes. And 
kids are back in school and we had 100 day homework this weekend. We had the garage, we had um, shopping, cooking. My son had a little dinner party with his friends. And if you have boys, um, you know that that means they had a dinner party and I had a clean up party after they were gone. And he swears he cleaned everything up. He's just like, I cleaned it all up. And I went in there in the morning and I went, oh my God. His idea of tidying up and my idea of tidying up are not the same thing. Now, I'm going to just be digressing and going all over the place. So what's happening here is I have these little puppy pads and I'm trying not to be so wasteful. And I have an old towel under here. Now, the reason why I have that old towel there, and it's really ugly, is because sometimes you get a big spill and I want it to absorb. I don't want it to go on me and I don't want it to go everywhere. And then I put the puppy pads on. That's another little absorption. And then I just change out the paper towel rather than the puppy, the puppy pads. I just got our dolly out of the oven and I'm going to start hair painting her. Now, if I were doing a straight up reborn doll, I would not be painting her hair yet. It wouldn't be time yet. But, sorry, I'm multitasking while I'm talking. But I think given the type of doll she is, <clears throat> I don't think I need to go for hyper-realism here. I just wanted to kind of deepen her up and make her look great. And she still has a varnish layer to go. And, um, but I think I'm ready to paint her hair, and it's gonna be a little tricky because she has some textured hair. We went through this when we were painting the Behringer too. But I'm just gonna go with it. I'm not gonna stress out about it at all. We're talking about a $2.99 investment, and so far I think she looks absolutely amazing. Um, I didn't take a before picture, but I can do a screenshot and then show the before and after. Let me show you her. She had a very, very flat mouth in here. Let me see if I can get up closer. And what I did was I did a little shading in there so it looked like it was a tongue. I don't know how realistic it looks, but it was better than just like this flat area. And I have my hair paint all mixed up and ready to go. Voila. And so even though I am gonna paint some hair right now, it isn't gonna be super, super, a super detailed hair painting because, um, Again, you know, I think it would look kind of silly. She's kind of a play doll. So I'm just going to keep it kind of light and, and sweet. And put my gloves on. And um, I think I'm going to start with a thicker paintbrush. And I need to put my glasses on this morning. I haven't had them on since I woke up. So I'm going to start off with just some super, super light brown. And um, once I get this layer on, I will show you some hair that I just processed and dyed. Um, it's on the floor here on a nice towel next to the space heater getting, um, getting dry. Ooh, that is way too thick. The beauty. Of, um, you know what? I think I'm going to actually darken up that crown a little bit. I've got kind of, I just got an idea. And I think I did this with a Behringer doll. I just kind of went over it with darker and then I wiped off the top and it just stayed in the grooves. And I think I'm going to do that this time. And I will just kind of pat that out. Feather it. You don't want to have a, you know, a strong, I don't want a strong delineating line. You might, but I don't. Now I'm just taking some leftover paint and I'm making kind of a thinner wash, a lighter color wash. I don't want it to be too thick because I'm just sketching out the hair at this point. I'm just laying down a layer.
basically I'm just underpainting some texture. That way when I go to do the next layer, I'll have a map of where I want hair. It'll be a little bit darker. When you're reboarding, it's all about just, you know, basically layers of paint, layers and layers and layers of paint. I'm just gonna put a little bit of darker paint here before I bake, um, just because that brush was big, so it made a ring of dark that I didn't want to have. Again, not going to get a very natural swirl because I'm following the artist's lines here. My son went to school crying his poor little head off. I felt so bad. It was one of those days where he was just not ready to wake up. He wasn't feeling like going to school. No kid is, ever feels like going to school. It's the hundredth day of school. We had a little bit of gluing to do in the morning, so I got him up a little bit earlier so we could put on the final pieces we were waiting to dry. And so he got up a little bit earlier than normal and he was not happy about that. He is not a morning person, boy, I'll tell ya. And, uh, as we were heading out the door, he decided he was going to go park himself in his room and, and sort through his Pokemon collection. He was told that wasn't going to happen. So he just went to school in tears. A great big mess, poor guy. I mean, you know, part of me wants to be mad at him because he was acting really bratty this morning. Wouldn't eat his breakfast and being very argumentative and contrary. And I was just like, I have had enough of you. Thank goodness it's Monday and you're going back to school. But also my heart was just breaking. I just knew that he was just like struggling all, all on the insides with all his, you know, very real kid problems. You know, they might seem small to me, but they're big and very, very, very valid to him. And he just wanted a little downtime and sort through his Pokemon cards. And I'm screaming at him to get out the door. I felt awful, but very messy but done. So I'm going to let that dry and then um, I will bake and come back with a fine, with some finer brushes. You know, there are stages you hit when you're painting where you go, oh, this is turning out terrible. This is turning out terrible. And if you're patient and write it out and keep working, you think, oh, well, that was just a little bump in the road and, and everything turned out okay. Glad I didn't give up. So oh, don't give up. Just keep going. Show you the mohair that I dyed. So here it is. Now, this color was supposed to be black brown. And I let it soak and do its thing. And you can see here what color the hair used to be. So you can see the color was super, super white. And then I dyed over it. Once I rooted, it looks okay, but I'm not crazy about that color. Some of the hair really took up the, the dye really well some of it did refuse and these are all different goat hairs from different goats because I was experimenting um, I also processed the curl um, and it th this hair was stubborn did not want to give up the curl so some of it is wavy some of it is still a little bit curly and this part this was a really great hair this was from a yearling this turned out gorgeous I'm really happy with that that was just a good batch of hair and that was the goat's first haircut, and so that's never gonna happen again. So what I'm going to do is probably give it a good rinse, let it dry overnight. I'm gonna keep this, this baby brown color. I think that'll look good. I don't have a lot of baby brown. And then I'm gonna dye it again tomorrow and see what happens. But that was a lot of fun, and that was an experiment. And the other thing I did today was I dyed a bunch of t-shirts they're in the washing machine. I can't wait to see what they look like. I'll pull them out when they're done. And I'll be right back after we bake that baby's head.